So this jigsaw apple is going to simulate caffeine. And this lettuce is going to simulate adenosine. How about them apples? In this video, I'm going to explain how caffeine works and how it works in your brain, but also what you can do to start coming off of the caffeine simply by understanding the physiology and the neurology that is going on with the adenosine receptors and your brain and caffeine in the first place. But first and foremost, I want to break down something simple. Caffeine is not that bad. It's not bad for you. In fact, caffeine is not even technically a stimulant. It's technically a natural stimulant enabler. And if you listen to this video and you listen to me through my entirety, throughout this entire video, you will have a solid understanding of exactly what I mean and how you can really control your caffeine intake to really work for your advantage and also help you burn some fat. What caffeine is, is an adenosine receptor antagonist. All that that means is it blocks the receptor that normally takes on adenosine. Well, what does that mean? Well, adenosine is something that builds up during the course of the day and eventually, by the end of the day, makes you tired. You have these adenosine receptors, in this case, the lettuce, and you have adenosine. Adenosine piles up throughout the course of the day in the brain and eventually gets the receptor. And when it hits the receptor, it makes you tired. And then you go to sleep and the receptors clear up and then they're ready for caffeine again the next day. So basically, you have this adenosine buildup all day and then all of a sudden you get tired. But what caffeine is, is it looks just like adenosine, but it's not. It blocks the receptor so that the adenosine in this case, it's the other apple, floats around and can't get in. Well, this basically has taken the place of the adenosine to simulate it. It's an imposter. The only difference is that the caffeine, unlike adenosine, isn't making you tired. You see, now you have a buildup of all this extra adenosine in the brain because it can't hit the receptor because caffeine is occupying it, and it makes you wired. Why does it do that? because all the extra adenosine causes the adrenals to produce more adrenaline, more epinephrine, more norepinephrine, all the catecholamines that get you wired. And to add insult to injury, it also causes a big surge in dopamine, which makes you feel good, which quite honestly is why a lot of us get addicted to caffeine, because we like to feel good. So I hope that that makes sense. It's a brief explanation of how it actually works when it comes down to really giving you energy. You see, it's your body's way of responding to something occupying a receptor. It's not like fentermine or these direct stimulants like even clenbuterol or things that affect your central nervous system. All this is is something that blocks the receptor and allows you to have energy by your body's own ability. Now, what exactly happens when we develop a tolerance to caffeine? Well, remember those adenosine receptors I was talking about? Well, the more that they get occupied, the more that your body and your brain starts to say, well, wait a minute, something's wrong here. So it needs to produce more of them. Boop, 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 boop. All of a sudden, instead of having maybe a thousand adenosine receptors, you have 1500. Your body has produced more in order to accommodate more of what is binding to it. You're never going to trick your body. A lot of people will say, shock your body, trick your body, this, that. Forget it. You're not going to outsmart all of the things that your body can do. It's amazing. So that is how a caffeine tolerance builds up. Eventually, you get to a point where you just need copious amounts of caffeine to have the same effect as you did last week or the week before. So how do you get over that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty easy to develop a tolerance in the first place though. Even the Journal of Clinical Investigation found that it only takes between one and four days to develop a tolerance. So it's really pretty easy. But here we're gonna talk about the withdrawals and how you can come off of caffeine or at least reduce the amount that you're taking in. So we have to understand that withdrawals really only affect about 50% of people. A lot of times it's a placebo effect, but there are a small population of people, like 13% on average, that get so affected by caffeine withdrawals that they're almost debilitated. They can't even work. So there are a subset of people that really get affected, but a lot of people, eh, they end up having a placebo effect. In fact, there was a study that was actually done, I don't have it right in front of me, but it showed that those that are addicted to coffee that were given decaf but not told it was decaf ended up not having withdrawal symptoms, therefore showing that a lot of it could just be a placebo effect. But the headache and all that stuff that you might get with a withdrawal, 
That comes from the cerebral blood flow velocity. Basically, it's the change in the vasoconstriction and the vasodilation that's causing a big surge of blood to rush to your brain. That's all it is. That's why you're having a headache. There's simple things that you can do to modulate that. Okay? You can take anti-inflammatory compounds like turmeric. You can take some fish oil like omega-3 that's going to actually cross through the blood-brain barrier and reduce the inflammation in your brain. Those are some simple holistic ways that you can combat that. But what about actually coming off the caffeine? How is that going to work? Well, you're not going to like this first answer. And that's going to be going cold turkey. Because quite honestly, again, studies have shown that it really only takes about three or four days to bounce back from caffeine withdrawals for your body to actually reduce the amount of adenosine receptors that it has again so that you have that nice, easy tolerance to caffeine where you can have one cup and be good to go. But the other thing that you can do is something that I do. I go fully leaded caffeine, then one week I'll do half calf, or I'll do half decaf, half regular, and then the next week I'll go full decaf. So it's like I'm sort of kind of indoctrinating decaf back into my life. I try to do that about once every three to four months. Right now, speaking honestly, I'm having more caffeine than I would like to be having. So it's probably about time for me to start that process. In fact, maybe doing this video is a prompt for me to start that tomorrow. Something that I do about once every three or four months. That's what I recommend for you. But there is something new. There's something out there that's known as ruticarpine, and I've been studying it a lot lately. What this ruticarpine is supposed to do is supposed to enhance the metabolism of caffeine in your body. It speeds it up. And there was a study that actually took a look at this. So this study was published in the Archives of Pharmacal Research, and it was simply studying the effect of ruticarpine on caffeine metabolism. And the results were pretty darn simple. Well, what this study found was that ruticarpine not only increased the metabolism of caffeine, but it also increased the metabolism of theophylline, also theobromine, and paraxanthine, all which have to do with that energy and the adenosine receptors. And it did so simply by increasing what is known as CYPA2 and CYPE1. These are basically just compounds that help break down caffeine and metabolize it faster. So what does that mean? It means in early stages, we're seeing that ruticarpine could be something that allows caffeine to get out of your body faster and allows the adenosine receptors to come back to normal as soon as possible. Now, I don't even know where to tell you you could find this stuff, but the fact is the science is pretty interesting. So the whole purpose of this video is to explain to you that caffeine isn't as bad as you think it is. It's not this crazy stimulant, and as long as you're not going over four, five, 600 milligrams per day, you're really not in any danger as long as you're keeping your heart in check and you're not doing anything crazy. The one thing I will say is keep hydrated because caffeine is a vasoconstrictor and is also a diuretic. So if you're not hydrated, then you're just messing up a multitude of other things that are going to slow down your fat loss. So if you want to get the fat burning properties of caffeine where it's mobilizing fatty acids, you got to make sure you're hydrated, you got to make sure you're not overdoing it, and you got to make sure that you're taking care of your lettuce and your apple. So remember, when you're dehydrated, you're losing your minerals. So that's why it's extremely important to check out the mag SRT so that you can have that sustained release magnesium that you need throughout the day, even if you're loading up on hundreds and thousands of milligrams of caffeine just to get through the day. As always, keep it locked in here with Jigsaw. I will see you on the next page.